Last week, Apple announced its latest OS for the iPhone, iOS 16. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the cool things that have been added. Now, before I get started, I just want to say a couple things. Like every year, Apple releases this beta into testing to start. Basically, more eyes on it allows for better and faster fixes. The system is going to be buggy, and it's not recommended that you put this on the device that you rely on for important things. If you do put it on, don't complain that it's broken and Apple's the worst. You're the idiot for not understanding what beta means. Thank you. The first feature that I want to show you has so much potential, I hope Apple keeps developing this. And that, of course, is the lock screen. It now goes beyond just having a photo that may or may not move on your phone. You do start with some suggestions of themes, but swipe to the left and you can start with a blank canvas. At the top, you can find a pic by people or just pick a photo that you like. You can shuffle multiple pictures, emojis, wallpaper, etc. I think the emoji wallpaper is absolutely wild. Again, you have a ton of options with their featured, weather, astronomy, and much, much more. Each wallpaper Apple designs has a different set of options. There are so many, but here are just a few. Once you choose the background, you can now customize what's on the screen. At the top, you have, again, a ton of choices. In this instance, I like having the date on mine just because it's easy to see. But you can see there are, again, a number of choices. Next is time. You can choose the font, the colors, and you can even make your own color. And below that, finally, widgets. Now the list isn't very long right now, but it does look like Apple's going to open this up to developers, so hopefully this will expand the list down the road. I do like a few of these already, but I would love to see stuff like messages or mail. Another added function to the lock screen is how your notifications appear. Under the settings and notifications, you now have an option to display ads. This lets you pick how you want the messages to appear, a stack, count, or a list. This can help keep things cleaner looking. They also appear from the bottom of the phone instead of the middle blocking everything. Apple's also opening up live widgets where you can get notifications that appear at the bottom for things like sports scores. On a side note, there is one thing I noticed that about the lock screen that I like. Nothing can be accessed without using your face ID or the passcode. So no one can access your apps, nor can they change what the lock screen looks like. The next changes that were made come in the text messages app. Some of these on the surface look really good, but also could be really bad. First, when you send a message, you have 15 minutes from the time you send it to edit or delete it, no matter if the person has read the message or not. Now, there are two things to this. Number one is the person receiving the message must also be using iOS 16. And number two, as shown here, when you delete a message, a prompt will appear notifying all parties that you have unsent a message. The good to this is when you want to delete a message for whatever reason, you can enter excuse here. And the bad is, well, do I really need to be giving you any ideas? Just use your imagination. The other change here is the ability to edit your message as well. Of course, sometimes typing a word wrong and typing to correct it in the next five texts, I personally think is super funny. But for others, just being able to edit the misspelled word can also save you a lot of pain or embarrassment. Again, use your imagination. Now that same 15 minute time limit applies to editing the message whether they've read it or not. This could change as the updated betas are rolling out. I think there are some things that do need to be adjusted with this personally. Also, Apple moved the way that you record voice memo, and if you want to use your voice to text, the keyboard will actually stay up now, so you can easily make changes if something that you said while you were talking wasn't right, and you can go back to fixing it, and then continue talking. This is something I've seen a ton of people use, so when you update to iOS 16, it didn't disappear, it's just moved. Another cool feature which I like is if you delete a conversation or a message, then you realize you need it back, you can tap on edit in the top left to access the recently deleted folder. Here you can recover the thread or delete them permanently. Also, if you want to make a messages unread so you don't forget them down the road and you can respond, you go ahead and swipe right and tap on red. Another feature that's getting expanded on is being able to take text from pictures. Now, there have been many times that I've tapped on a photo to edit or zoom, and I've noticed that little select to text at the bottom right corner. Especially if you want to look something up, it's really cool and it saves time from typing. Well, now this is also available on video. Also the ability to translate languages. So when you're watching a video, 
You can simply stop it, tap on the screen to select the text that you want to copy, then you can hold your finger down, swipe over to where you're going. I know this is a little bit to get used to, but then you can drop that text to where you want to start searching online. It's certainly something to get used to. I tried this on a video stored on my phone and a couple websites. It is hit or miss right now, but I think it'll get better as they move on. I can see this being really helpful for people looking up something or if you want to go ahead and translate on the go. Personally, I never leave my house, so it's not useful for me, but I do know that most other people do travel, so it will be helpful for you if you remember that it's there. Now something from my there is no way anything could go wrong file, Apple Pay is now going to offer something called Apple Pay Later. According to Apple, any place that accepts Apple Pay will give you the option to make four installment payments over six weeks on an item. They even created this fancy little directory to show how much money you owe that you don't have. Now I worked in banking for many, many years and without even seeing this in action, I can see the issues now. First off, you will have to draw this off your credit card or debit card and you better have the money in your account because when payment is due, they're going to take it out and you're going to call the bank and say, what is this fee on my account? Why did you pay them if I didn't have the money in there? What's going on? Little word of advice, if you don't have the money in your account, don't buy it. I can also see people using this to fill up their gas tanks these days. So, wow, paying for gas over six weeks, ah, that's bad, that's bad. Don't, don't do that, don't, no, don't do that. Before I say what I'm about to say, I know there might be some comments, so here goes. That's it. These are the only worthy things that I think right now people will actually use. Everything else is just meh. Are there a ton of other things that people might use? Sure, but let's be honest. They aren't going to use these things more than once. It's not going to change your life. If you want to watch a 20 to 30 minute video on the 50 new things in iOS 16, be my guest. There are a ton of creators that do an awesome job finding every hidden thing. This iOS update isn't a revolutionary thing. There's that word again. If you want to know what else I think is revolutionary, go ahead and check out this video right here. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. You all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.